Hi guys, Yasas Kakalos Tirfate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making meatloaf that's gonna be stuffed with feta and roasted red peppers. I'm gonna show you two different ways to make it. One is gonna have a tomato sauce and some potatoes on the side. The other one is gonna be plain and you can dress it up with whatever you want afterwards. Both are delicious. We give you options here. So I'm doubling the recipe on the website. The recipe is gonna be for one meatloaf. So keep that in mind. I know you guys are gonna love this one. Let's get started. So I like to use my food processor for this because it makes life so much easier, so much less chopping needed to be done. So I'm gonna start off with the onion. Now I already grated the garlic. I usually grate garlic and then I keep it frozen. If you don't have grated garlic, then you would put the garlic cloves in here with the onion. And I'm gonna go ahead and finely chop this or pulse it until it's very finely chopped. And I'm just gonna put it in here with all of the meat. Now, um, for one loaf, one meatloaf, or one batch of meatloaf, it's also one onion, but I would just use a smaller onion. Instead of overloading it with two onions, I thought one uh, big size onion would be enough for this. I don't want it to be too oniony. This isn't cooked, so the onion is gonna have lots of strong flavor. I'm just gonna break off the, the top part of the parsley with all the leaves. It's still gonna have some of the stems attached. You could save the bottom stems for soups and stocks. And I'm also gonna pulse this until it's very finely chopped. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add that to the big bowl. Now, these are six garlic cloves that are finely grated. For one batch, it's, there's gonna be three, and like I said, the recipe is gonna have the ingredients for one batch. Now, over here, I have four pounds of ground beef. The best cut, if you're getting it from your butcher, would be a sirloin cut, but if you're getting it from your supermarket, an 85 lean and 15% fat is the best way to go, so that way it's not too dry and it's not too greasy. I'm gonna add four eggs right here on the side, and I'm just gonna whisk them up so that way I don't have to dirty another bowl. Two teaspoons of salt for each portion of beef, so I'm doing four because there's four pounds. And it might sound like a lot, but we're gonna have lots of breadcrumbs going in here too, and the breadcrumbs are unseasoned. Speaking of breadcrumbs, I like to buy unseasoned panko breadcrumbs. These are Japanese style breadcrumbs. I really like them. I usually have them on hand. I never buy the seasoned breadcrumbs. I like to add my own seasonings. If you don't have breadcrumbs, but if you have stale bread, you could add that instead of this. And it is one and a half cups or 115 grams for one batch, but we are doing two. So that's gonna be three cups. Lots of freshly cracked black pepper. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. This is optional, um, adds a lot of flavor too, but you can leave it out if you don't have it. And two teaspoons of dried oregano. And I also like to add some crushed red pepper flakes, leave them out if you don't like them. And the best way to mix this up is with your hands. <laughs> And if you're making a double batch, which you should, because this does freeze well, um, start off with a bigger bowl. This one, I use the glass one, so that way you can see better. But I have a bigger stainless steel bowl that just makes mixing so much easier. I had to stop to clean the mess up. So once everything is incorporated, it's a good idea to have two pieces of parchment paper ready if you're making a double batch. And we're gonna put half of this on one piece and half on the other, and then we're just gonna press it out and flatten it out into a rectangle. Does that look even to you? I don't know, that looks good to me. Okay, so now it's time to make the stuffing, but before we do, I'd like to say that I forgot to add the milk to the meatloaf mixture, and that is a bad thing. Um, the milk amount, was one cup. It was supposed to be two cups and, and it was gonna help it stay nice and moist. 
I don't feel like re-rolling it all out, so I'm just gonna leave it, but make sure you don't leave the milk out. I've used this recipe over and over again. This is the same recipe I use to make my keftedes, which are meatballs. I also use it to make um, the biftekia, which are the, they're also like little meatloaves cooked in the oven with uh, potatoes and stuff. And it's an essential ingredient, but honestly, <laughs> I don't feel like doing that part all over again, so I'm just gonna skip it for the sake of the video. But you watching at home, please don't leave that out. What I did was I just cut up two roasted red peppers from the jar. I like to buy them. They're um, in brine in the supermarket. They're usually sold in the same section where canned tomato sauces and things like that are. Sometimes you'll find it in the international section, but they have loads and loads of flavor. So I'm going to fill one with the roasted red pepper. And the other one is going to get harissa sauce. It's going to be a little bit spicy, a little bit flavorful. I have eight ounces of feta for each one of the meatloaves that I'm just going to crumble. And you want to crumble, crumble it on one side on one side because you're going to roll it up. Now, if you want, you can definitely saute some spinach and add that in here. You could add some uh, kalamata olives that have been roughly chopped and pitted, of course. You can put some mushrooms in here, just whatever veggies you're putting in. Make sure that you saute them first in a little bit of olive oil so that way they don't um, release a lot of liquid and make it watery. And then I like to put uh, shredded mozzarella on top of this just to get a little bit of that cheesy pull. But this cheese is really good too. It's a Mexican cheese blend. It's just a blend of shredded Colby Jack, Monterey and cheddar cheeses. Whatever cheese melts well, you can use that. And just a little bit. And for this one over here, I have pre-made harissa sauce. I like to buy the mild one so that way it's not too spicy. A few tablespoons will do. And I have a recipe where you can make your own on the website. So now with the help of the parchment paper, you're gonna roll this over. And hopefully the no milk didn't do too much damage. We're gonna find out. So once you transfer it into the baking pan, you can stick it all back together. Well, it's looking pretty good to me. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the second one. Okay, so over here I have a few baking potatoes that I've just peeled and I just kept them in some cool water to keep them from turning brown. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them into little cubes. I'm gonna drizzle them with some really good quality olive oil. We have this one in our shop. It comes straight from the island of Crete, where I'm from, and it's really good quality olive oil, like I said. Really good for salad dressings and stuff like that. So a little bit of olive oil. Potatoes need lots of salt some black pepper and a little bit of dried oregano. I'm just gonna toss them all together. You can add them to whichever one, but I'm gonna add them to this one that doesn't have the harissa because it's also gonna get some tomato sauce. And you can make your own tomato sauce or you can use store-bought pasta sauce to make life a little bit easier. You're gonna need a whole jar. This is 24 ounces or 680 grams. And I'm gonna cover the tray with the potatoes with a little bit of foil so that way it helps them cook through. The other tray that has just the plain meatloaf, I'm just gonna drizzle some olive oil on top of it. So the oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. These are gonna bake on the center rack for 40 minutes, and then I'm gonna raise the temperature to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna remove the foil from the one that has the potatoes, and I'm gonna let it cook for about 20, 25 minutes or until it's beautifully golden all around. Once they come out of the oven, you're gonna to wanna to let them rest for a good 15, 20 minutes so the juices can redistribute and it won't be dry. Like, I'm keeping my fingers crossed because I have never made meatloaf or meatballs or beef that get without milk and I'm hoping that they come out good. 
It smells good already. I'll show you what they look like as soon as they're done. All right, so the meatloaves are ready and I'm scared to try them because I forgot to put the milk in there and it's just driving me crazy. But it is what it is. You guys do as I say, not as I do. So that way it comes out delicious. Do not leave out the milk, trust me. It makes a huge difference. It is time for the taste test. They both look delicious. The, the one with the tomato sauce did take a little bit longer to cook. The one without sauce was out in about an hour and five minutes, but the one with the tomato sauce, because we had it covered, it did have a lot of liquid in it and the potatoes weren't quite done yet. So I did leave it in there for another 15, 20 minutes or so. I don't know, I think I didn't really count, but every oven works different. Keep an eye on it. As soon as the potatoes are ready, you can take it out. The meat will be done. If you want to use a meat thermometer to check the doneness, it should be between 155 degrees Fahrenheit to 160. That's how you know the meatloaf is done all the way through on the inside. You just stick it in halfway and it should read 155 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how you know it's done. Let it sit and then go ahead and serve it. Let's, let's take a taste test. Let's see what, it, let's see. Delay, like we say in Greek. What does it say? So I'll try the one with the harissa first. Mm. A little spicy. Surprisingly, the meatloaf is still pretty soft. I'm very surprised. <laughs> now it's time for the one with the roasted red peppers and feta. If you don't like roasted red peppers, by all means, leave them out and substitute some sauteed spinach. Mm. I think I prefer the one with the roasted red peppers in there over the harissa. Both delicious. I also love that sauce, tomato sauce with meatballs. It's just such a great comforting combination. If you want to print out the recipe, head on over to the website, DemetriusDishes.com. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. I'll see you all next time. Yes, us.